Welcome back to The Knitting Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey, and thank you so much for joining us with Yarnspirations.com. What we have is a Karen Fair Isle knit hat. So I've been looking at this pattern for years and I'm just learning to knit, as you know. So I really wanna kinda of tackle this thing. This has color work that's involved, and you're gonna see the stocking knit stitch that is here. And so what we have to do is that we have to start getting ourselves started on the, the brim and then work our way up. So there is a chart on number two, which is what we're going to follow later on to be able to follow the color weight in order to make this. So you'll see this in number two. And the only way to really do this pattern is to be able to print this out or at least follow it on um, some kind of screen so that you can do that. So I'm going to already start off and I want you now to cast on a total of 88 stitches and this is using Karen Simply Soft with a 4.5 uh, millimeter circular knitting needle or US 7 and so I have my knitting needles here. I have a total of 88. You are going to need a stitch marker so we'll have that on there when we're ready and then right now please cast on 88. I did a twist and transfer cast on and make sure that the cord is not too long here. It says that it was a 16 inch. I think mine's 14 so just so you know. Let's uh, begin this process and cast on and then join you back here in a few moments. So we're going to begin. I've been casting on here so I am right-handed so I'm now going to flip this thing over so that the yarn is coming from my right here. Okay, and so we're gonna begin. You're going to need a stitch marker to help you count the number of rounds. And what, what we're going to do is that you wanna stretch this all the way to the other side, to the tip. The first one is always kind of a pain from what I've been <laughs> able to gather so far. I did double count the uh, twice to make sure I did have 88. And so just keep on stretching it around so that it's more flexible. And you'll notice after the first round, it'll be a lot more easier. So the first round is always kind of a pain. So we're going to begin, and you're going to insert this, the, the, slit, uh, the stitch marker on, and let's get the yarn ready into our hands. So to do this round, plus uh, the next um, six rounds, so seven rounds total, you wanna start off with K2, so you wanna knit two. So just coming and doing the knit stitch, And because you're just joining for the very first time, pull it tight and then also do the other one. So it's knit two in a row. And as you slide this up, slide this down. Okay, so it goes around the quarter and back up. Okay, so just keep on doing it. So the first two have been knit, just tug on it just to tighten it up a little bit. And now we're gonna do a purl two. So move the yarn in front and purl two. We have slower tutorials on this channel on how to do things if you need that, like certain stitches and steps. Once uh, you got that, you're gonna go back to the, the back and knit two. So you're just gonna knit two, purl two, and you're gonna do that all the way around, okay? And so the very last two stitches before you get to the end should be a purl two. So you're gonna see it's gonna loosen right up as soon as you start really knitting with it. So just keep moving around the cord and then back up. So please do this same concept going all the way around and we're starting to make the ribbing as we know it. So I'm coming to the very end of round number one. And this is a really critical round because we really wanna attach it um, securely as you come around for the first time. Okay, so the last two will be a purl stitch. If your stitch counts are right, there should be a total of 88 stitches total. And once you get here, move the stitch marker up. So just move it over. And you're going to notice is that you just wanna make sure that you're grabbing this properly. Okay, so that came off. So we're going to match exactly what we just did. So the first two in are going to be a knit stitch. So rounds number uh, two all the way through seven. So a total of six rounds will all be the same. So when you do the first one after a jump, just pull on it tight to tighten things back up. And so the first two will always be the knit stitch and then the second two will always be a purl. And you're going to see as you do these rounds that you will see the ribbing of the brim take effect. It's also a lot more looser than it was on the first time. So please do this round. This is round number two. And so you were going to then do all the way through um, seven. 
so uh, in order to make this happen okay so check it off on your list and then maybe after you've done the seventh round and then we're going to move on to the next to expand it a little bit bigger so please do this and i'll be back in just a few seconds so i'm back I have my seven rows done, so I usually write notes on these patterns. So now we're gonna do this next round of knit 11 and then make one. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. So let's do this, and the make one is an increase. Let's do that. So we're no longer doing pearls going forward, and so you're just gonna knit, make sure that you transfer your stitch marker and knit the first 11. So I'll count those out loud with you. So we have one, two, three. This is the knit stitch, by the way four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And now we're going to make one. Let me go slowly. Do you see, I'm just going to hold these with the same hand. Do you see this line right here? Let me just point it with the pencil. It's right here. That's where you want to aim. And you want to get this needle through here and then onto this needle so that you can do that. So let's do that. So let's just be very careful here. So we're just going to go in from the front. I'm going slow because I, I can only film this once. So I'm going to go in and collect. So now it looks like a regular stitch. And so you treat it like a regular knit stitch. So you're going to go in and capture it in behind. And then you wrap the back needle and through. And now you've just made a new stitch. So you made an increase. And so you have to then knit the next 11 and then uh, make one, knit the next 11 and make one. Do that all the way around. We're now ready for the Farrell chart and we're gonna start from rows one and go all the way to 42 here. So it's a long way to go and there's a lot of great colors along the way. So I kind of looked ahead and I thought to myself, oh my God, am I gonna have to drag three yarns at one time? And the truth is yes. So you're going to see that you'll see it dragging in this row and you just have to look, it's right here. So I was really quite happy with that because I realized uh, when I look at this kind of element that the three yarns that you'll have to use at the same time are very, very few times. So that's good. So what I'm going to do is that we're gonna start on row number one. You can see it's all the same color. You can see the contrasting. And I also have my little sheet that I did here so that I can compare. So row number one is all the same color. And when I show you row number two, I'm gonna show you how to manipulate uh, the two colors at the same time using two hands. So let's do row number one. It's just a straight uh, knit around just with the color A. So the first round here is just on the chart. It's just a knit stitch all the way around and do that and I'll be back in just a moment. So let's give you some tips. I've just completed number one, so I'll put a line through it so that I'm done. And I, and I can reprint it if I wanna redo this thing in the future. So I'm going to start off and the first color will be the light color and then I will have three and then a light color and then I will have three. So you can just easily remember those kind of things. Here in number three, the way that I would see it is that you have three in a row and then you have the three of the light blue, but then these two blue. So I just don't say there's two. I will say one, two, three, four, five. So after I get this uh, cross beam kind of done, I will say there's five blue and then start again. So I'm looking to, for the commonality of when a color uh, goes on to the other side of, of the chart. Do you know what I'm saying? So you see that it starts off with blue, ends with blue, so I would want to count that and so that I can keep the count. And once we get this established, I believe that we're going to be able to see where everything is going to go. So I'm going to take you through a row number two. I'll show you how to hold the yarns and you can decide what is going to work best for you. So our first thing that we need to do is introduce a second color that we'll be riding at the same time. And as I pointed out, there's going to be a few times in this chart that you'll have to have three at the same time. When you go to start this, just create a loop. So don't create a slip knot to begin. You have to trust in the system and just allow it to float. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start the first stitch 
as you can see. And instead of wrapping it with this one, I'm just going to loop this one here and put this on and just knit it just to get it to hold. And we're going to secure this tail in at a later time. So I won't do all the tails until the near the end of the project, so you know. And so we'll knit with that. So then the pattern states that the next three are the darker blue. So you're just going to grab the other blue here, how you normally would hold it, and just do three blue. And then I'm going to show you a different way of holding the light blue in just a moment. So there's three of these. Now, with Fair Isle, if it's too tight, the whole hat will ruin itself for the tension. So Marley Bird showed me this concept, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this yarn into my left hand. So if you're a crocheter, then you will be able to do this probably pretty easily. So you're just going to do it, and you're going to raise your finger like this. And if you do want to wrap it double like exactly a mirror of this, you can do that if you want, but I prefer this because it's the way I crochet. And I'm just going to go underneath and I'm just going to grab my work like this. So this yarn here will be going to this hand. I have a different tutorial available just in this technique alone. It's called um, Two Handed Two Colors, the tutorial if you need it. So just raise your pinky and just come around. And then put the other yarn into your hand like you have been, like this. And so therefore you're using two strands. So when you go to knit with the next one, and you make sure you keep your tension, you go to knit the, with the next one, is that you're going to go in, and instead of using this color, you want to use the, the light blue. So you're just going to use your finger, the middle finger if you want to, and just push up, and you will be able to gather it here. And this will keep the floater in behind nice and easy to access. Okay, so it's, it's not going to be too tight. It's all about tension. Okay, so that one is done. So then you'll have three of the blue, of the dark blue, sorry. So we have one, two, and three. And notice in that light blue is just kind of holding there. It's out of the way. It's in behind. And then the next one is a light blue. So when you go in, ignore this one on this side and just use your finger. Just push up and pop it through. I'll show you one more time. So it'll be three of the dark blue. So we have one, two, and three. And then a light blue is next. So just let the floaters float easily behind. And I found um, this way was much better and I didn't ruin the size of my hat. So then you'll end up with that going around. So please do this round. This is round number two. So I'm coming all the way around on the second round. And hopefully this is helping you to know this information. I'm only doing a, a few rounds with you here and then I'll let you do the chart. Make sure you transfer your stitch marker and get ready for the third round. So when you go to look at the chart, you'll notice that the first three are going to be the darker blue. So you just go in and start and you do the first three as dark blue. So we have one, two, and three. And then the next one, the next three are actually are going to be the, the light. You'll notice that this looks loose. Don't worry about it. It's the, it's the end. You can always, when we go to secure that, you can secure it and pull it in and then secure it later. So just let those hold. Don't worry about those. So the next three are going to be the light blue according to the chart. So you just use the light blue instead. Okay, and then once that's done, so the, I told you the way that I counted it is that the next five are gonna be the dark blue. So you end up with the light speckle in between almost like the cross looking shapes that you see. And this will help you really get established on the, the way that this pattern is going to look in the future. So then you have the dark blue here. This is the five. And then the next three are the light. Do this all the way around. This is round number three. So I'm going to take you through one more round. And so we're going to have this color, 
three of the dark blue, one light blue, and then three of the dark blue, and then this again. So we're going to just continue. Now we're gonna have three colors that will be in our hand. The light blue will be done at the end of this round. And so we're gonna to have to work with three yarns at the same time. So I'm a new knitter, as you know, so I'll figure it out. And if you have better ideas on how to do it, then please leave it in the comments, because I'd love to learn a better way if there is one. So I'm using the color persimmon for this, and I'm going to start and the first one here is going to be the persimmon. And we'll just let that dangle in behind. So we'll knit that one. And then I'm gonna put the darker blue into my hands and that will be three darker blue. I'm also gonna get that other stuff ready in my hands in just a few moments. So let's do the dark blue here. One, two, and three. And then the light blue is going to come up. So I'm going to put that into my left hand. And I'm also going to try to put the other color into my left hand as well. And see how that goes. So I want to use just the blue. So when I do this, I'm just going to use the blue and scoop up only the blue. It's the only way I can think about doing this. And then keep on going. So dark blue again. So one... two, three, and then we have the persimmon, that color right there. So we're gonna go in and just grab that one, just use my hand, push it up and through. And I wanna make sure that the floater stays nice and behind. So nothing too tense, cause you'll ruin it. And now we're back to the regular blue for three, or the dark blue, so one, two, and three, and then it's going to be the light blue for one. Let's just push the light blue up. So I think just a little bit of practice for me. I've, I've never done this off camera yet, so this is my first time. Ooh, I know, don't get excited. And so then we're back to the dark blue for three, and then the persimmon for one, dark blue, and then the light. Please do this all the way around and at the end of the round the light blue will be done and I'll show you what to do at that point. So now just come around on that round and you can see how it looks. Neat right? So the light blue is done for now so I want to cut this yarn the light blue and get that out of the picture so that I don't have to worry about that now for another time. So what you can do I'm just going to take my stitch marker off temporarily and what you can do is that you can start securing stuff in. So if you wanna start with the very first time you use that light blue, I'm just gonna put it onto a tapestry needle behind. And you just wanna secure it if you want to, or you can wait to the end of the project. It really kinda of doesn't matter, I, I have found, but you can determine what's best for you. And so you may think that it looks loose. So you kinda of wanna match the same tension as a regular stitch. So if you just pull on it, you can change that a little bit. And I'm just gonna secure it in behind. And when I go through, I just wanna go through a couple strands that are just holding. So if I see that needle popping through the front, you're gonna be in trouble with yourself. And so I wanna secure that into a knot formation and careful how, how tight you pull that. You don't wanna change the shape of that. And so now I'm gonna do it again. Just going around that section again. Oops, it's always, and then tie it into a knot. Okay, and then I'm just gonna weave a strand through, just like this, just to get it out of the way. And now that's good to go. And you can see the tension of that. It's kind of just jumping around like a jackrabbit. So you can secure in the tails. I would recommend that you do a whole coloring before you do that, just to make sure. So this one I'm not ready to do that with, um, that I started with. So what I need you to do is go back to the chart and we can check that off the list that we just did this. And now just follow your chart all the way up to number 42. And that's where I'm gonna pick you up next. So um, as the colors come and go, just check it off. And now you know how to carry your yarns and to do all of that. And if you're thinking, God, it's already hard, shit i'm a new knitter so if i can do this and i really really want this hat for myself my determination to have one of these is bigger than my determination to quit 
So that might be something that is of interest to you on how you approach something like this. So I uh, don't give up on yourself because when you give up on yourself, um, the only person that you can really truly blame is yourself. So um, just keep on and hopefully you see that. And so I'll be working on this for the next few nights, I suppose. And I will continue this, but in tutorial format, you'll have everything back to back to back for instructions. Make sure you always put back your stitch needle so that you know where things are, or your stitch marker, and that's good to go. Have a good one, and we'll see you back here in a few seconds, and I'll have the things done. I just gotta do the work. So I'm back, and I worked on this until midnight last night, so I started filming yesterday, and I got this far, and now I'm ready to finish the rest with you on camera. So I have literally followed it all the way up, and I checked it off on my list. It's now time to change to double point needles because we've been going in the round. The only way to get it to come closer to the end is by switching over to the double points so that we can close this down because this wire will not get any shorter. So our goal in the first section as we go to shape there is to now convert these over to the double points and we're gonna be doing that next. It's stated in the instructions here, eight stitches repeat will be worked 12 times. So we know that uh, the it's in a section of 12. Okay, so the whole thing is like a clock. So when I go to the double points, I wanna make sure that three sections are on one needle, three sections on another, and another, and another. So there's gonna be a total of four needles with the fifth one being the one that we're gonna knit with. And so our goal is to do that. So think of everything, eight stitches, all as a set. So there'll be three sets per needle. Let's begin that process. And we're gonna go right up here with shape in the crown first time and we're going to knit six and then put two together and once we have that done we're just going to use the color a whatever color you decided to which in my case was the very first and we're going to use the solid color to finish this off so let's begin we want to keep this stitch marker handy and we're going to put that and i'll show you where to put it so this side here is where we're kind of ending our journey and we're just going to push this over and we're going to transfer then this here to the new double points. So there's gonna be three sets here. So you're gonna knit six, and we wanna get our next color up, which in this case, it'll be reintroducing. So just leave that long loop and put that on. And you're gonna knit with that. So we have one, and then just put this behind. I actually been putting them inside the hat because it's easier and out of my way. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, and then two together. So knit six, and then so put your needle in there, collecting two loops, and do the knit stitch, and that's a two together. So that was one set of three that needs to be on this needle here. So let's do the next, and let's knit the next six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're going to knit the next two together. Okay. And do it one more time one more set. So we're going to do count it again. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then two together. Okay, so there is three sets on this needle now. Once this is off, push this so it's halfway through and leave it out to the back and then grab a new needle and do the next three sets. Okay, so knit six, put two together, do that three times and jump. When you jump, you're just gonna stick in, grabbing this yarn. It's important that you pull this tight though. So going around, the first one's always a pain if you're new to this concept, but the, just go in there, just get things out of your way and pull on it, use your finger and pull and do the next one. I'm just gonna leave this, see if I can get this underneath out of the way. 
and do the second one. The second stitch is the last time you can pull that. You don't want a gap between this needle and this one, so you have to pull tight. So that was two, three, four, five, and six, and then two together. Okay, so after you get your three sets on this needle, do exactly the same thing, and you will have four needles in play with the fifth one in your hand. Please do this all the way around. So I'm now ready to start, and we're gonna do round number two, and I am gonna use a stitch marker. So grab the fifth needle that you have, and you're gonna start. Okay, so this here will transfer over. So you're gonna to wanna to push this up, and when you pull this one for the first time, because it, you're going around in a circle and because you're jumping, you want to always pull it tight. So you're going to knit and just kind of pull tight. Okay. So just use your fingers, pull up. And then once you have that, you can slide off and do the next one. The first one is always a pain. So if you think it's not, then it's a problem. Okay, so kind of pull. I want you to put the stitch marker in here and this will represent the first, like whenever you see it, that you know that this is a new round to go around. So as you go, you just wanna knit in each stitch all the way around until you get to the end of the first needle. You don't need to count, just let it happen naturally. Sorry about the scraping of the table. I'm going to turn down the sound. So as you finish one needle, the needle that is in my left here is going to run out and that'll be the new needle I'm going to use to knit with once we jump. So this is round two and this is an alternative. So when I say to knit all the way around, this is exactly what you're doing. You're not having to count, you just can do it. So just push this then all the way, midway, and then just reposition your hands. Move this one up. This is the fresh needle and then begin again. Just keep on going until you run into that stitch marker to tell you that you've gone all the way around. And this is round number two and alternative rounds. Okay, now that I've done the first round of showing you how to do the decrease and then the second round is just a straight knit, I'm going to read the following instructions for you and then you can do it. So you'll be getting smaller and smaller as you're doing the decreasing rounds. So at the end of each instruction, just put me on pause, do it, and then, re and then start playing the video again. Round number three, you're going to knit five, and then put two together, knit five and put two together. So please do that now. In round number four, you're just going to do a straight knit all the way around. Please do that now. In round number five, you are going to knit four. So knit four and then put two together, knit four, put two together. Please do that now. In round number six, you're going to knit all the way around. So just straight knitting all around. Please do that now. Round number seven, you're going to knit three and then put two together, knit three and put two together all the way around. Please do that now. In round number eight, you are just gonna do a straight knit all the way around. Please do that now. The last round, number nine, you're gonna knit two and then put two together. So knit two, put two together, and please do that all the way around. And then from this point, we're going to proceed on doing the end. So I will see you there in just a few moments. So you ready for a happy ending? Of course you are, you're ready to be finished. So let's create this to be a long tail so that we can collect our stitches. There's a total of 36 stitches that are left. And what we're gonna do is snippy snip, snip. 
and grab a tapestry needle. I know how you much li you love the tapestry needles. And don't be leaving comments about that either. <laughs> so what I want to do is that I want to start where this is finished and I want to start on the first needle here. And all I'm going to do is just transfer these loops onto the needle. Okay, so just maybe get it closer to the tip. Don't take the stitch marker with you unless you plan on wearing that on the top of your head. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me at this point. So what I'd like to do is just confirm by pulling some of the yarn through just to make sure that it's on there before it falls off. Okay, so just going in and so go all the way around collecting these strands and releasing them off the needles as you confirm that they're done. And I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming to the very last one and the needle's out and we're just going to pull. So it's quite open at the top. So when you pull, you just kind of want to evenly pull so everything kind of comes together. Help it to shape it as you're pulling. And keep pull, pull, pull. This yarn is actually really quite strong. So you have some choices to make. So right where it's coming out, I like to go just personal preference, kind of just folds naturally into a set of four. It seems to be normal. I go right up over the top directly wherever it comes out. Okay, so it comes out of here, I'm going across. And then this will come straight across. And then I'm going to go from this side to this side. So you have to determine if you're going to put a pom-pom on it. Now, the way that I see it is that some people absolutely despise pom-poms, which I think life is short to do that, but people do that. Um, but what you want to do before we get to that point is just put the needle down through the top. Now the whole inside I've not been securing in the tails as I've been going, so I got a little bit of work ahead of me just off camera. And I'm just reaching in and I'm pulling that needle. And I want to pull that until I don't see any more yarn coming out. So it's gone. Now, look at this mess. <laughs> it's actually not a mess it's all good so you're going to just see where this comes out and you want to secure it just don't go too deep that it's going to go through and I, and I know through experience that it's not but you're just going to come in and you're just going to tie it into a knot here now I already showed you how to um, secure in these other tails that you have but what I need you to really make sure is that you want to um, be able to pull those so that they don't change the shape of your stitches. So when you go to work your way up, because you've been changing at the same spot um, all throughout the whole thing, you'll notice it's all going up on a line. Right when you start, just make sure when you pull, see how this one's a little loose? So when you pull that one, let's just, um, let me just grab it and pull it and let's see what happens. Okay, so when I go to pull that one, it'll change that shape. And so you just want to kind of wiggle it away and let it try to match the shape before securing it in. Okay, so make sure you do that and then you can secure that. Okay, so we have that. Now, you can add a pom-pom to this. And what I would recommend, if you're going to sell these at the craft show, some people really have a distaste for pom-poms, which I don't know why that is, but it is. And so what people like to do is they put pom-pom on, on a strand. And then under the inch side, they just tie it into a bow tie that is secure to the top. If you ever have to wash the hat, you can just take it off through the bow tie and then put it back on. Um, but some people use that as an excuse. So somebody says, well, I don't like the pom-pom. I would have bought your hat. And you say, whoo, look, no more pom-pom. And they still don't buy it. You realize that they're feeding you lies. <laughs> but this is, ends up being a really neat hat. I am going to add a pom-pom because this is for me. And life's too short not to enjoy a pom-pom once in a while. This is it, and we hope you had a good one today. Bye-bye.